What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite auntie, Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup. This is season two, episode 23, Broken Bonds, and this is a season finale, y'all. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down and hit the notification button so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this season finale was good. Let me fix my collar. Look like I'm all disheveled and shit. This episode was good. Um, I do have to say, we TV, you pissed me off because you left me with questions. A season finale is not supposed to leave you with questions, and I was left with questions. But overall, the episode was good. Um, I hope y'all are ready. I'm ready, so let's get right on into the review. Brittany and Marcelino, y'all. So the judge ended up working in Brittany's favor. You know, Brittany was nervous as hell, right? Because, you know, when the last episode ended, they were on their way into custody court. You know, Gio's dad has full custody over Giovanni. And Brittany is fighting so she can get at least have custody because right now she really doesn't have any rights over him at all. Gio is just, you know, been over there at the house because her ex Tito has been allowing him to be over there or whatever, right? So they got out of court and the judge worked in her favor, gave her 60-40 custody over Giovanni. And y'all... I was so happy for Brittany, like I knew her, like I was a part of the family, bitch, like I've been up there struggling with her the whole time. Since Brittany got on the show, I don't know if nobody else noticed, but what I noticed, you could really see her growth from when she first got on here, fresh out of prison, trying to, you know, navigate the relationship between her and Marcelino, trying to navigate friendships and just being back out there in the world to where she is now. She's a dope ass mom, brand new mom, she, they got a house, cars, like she is thriving. She has worked hard to get where she is right now. And I'm so happy for her because now her and Marcelino will have 60-40 custody of Giovanni. So she ain't got to worry about Tito trying to come in and trying to take him away, none of that. So I'm very, very, very happy for her on that. Later on, y'all, it's so cute. Her and Gio are outside and they're making a banner for Sasha. The thing, the deal is at eight o'clock, they're gonna meet outside of the jail where Sasha is. Sasha's gonna look out her window and they're gonna have like this little surprise or whatever for her, right? And so the surprise is they make a banner and they're asking Sasha to be Zoila's godmother. I thought that was so cute, but the, the way they had it planned was cute. Like eight o'clock, they were outside, you know, like kind of where her window is. And so she flashed the lights to let them know what, when, you know, what room she's in or whatever, right? And so they held up the sign. Marcelino was holding up Zoila like Simba, y'all. It was so damn cute now side note is that where she gotta spend the 10 years in prison at because that would be real fucked up like you can just look out the window and see your freedom see it all going down but you can't be a part of it i don't know if maybe that's just county jail where she's gonna be until she gets shipped off to jail jail but if she gotta stay there for 10 years looking outside her window but then again it might not be so bad because you'd be right there at home but then again at the same time you looking out the window and it's like damn I want to go outside too. Like, that's got to be real messed up. But it was so, 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 so cute. Y'all, in this moment, I was so proud of Marcelino. Everything that I... Of course, he's still an asshole. Don't get it twisted. He's still an asshole. But the one thing I love about Marcelino is the love and the protection that he has for Brittany and that he has for Gio. And for him to come through at the last minute and to actually be there and to support Brittany and to support Sasha, because y'all know he was completely against Sasha being Zoila's godmother. But he sees that Sasha is more than just Brittany's friend. She's her family. And like Brittany was saying, when you locked up the relationships that you have outside are what counts. That's what gets you through. And so I was so proud of Marcelino. He pulled through on the cut, uh, the clutch. He was there for Sasha, and so she's going to be the grandmama. I mean, not the grandmama. She's going to be the godmother. Y'all, I love that scene. I loved everything about it. I was so proud of Marcelino, y'all. Hopefully, they live happily ever after moving off from them. Y'all, Scott and Lizzie, they getting on my damn nerves. They outside on some old hillbilly ratchet shit out there arguing in the front yard. Everybody out there looking at them. Lizzie trying to get in the car and leave. Scott over there blocking the door. Then gonna ask her who you been with, what, what you been doing, who we been. First of all, y'all ain't even been together. Now, I know that's messed up. Lizzie had your, she, she manipulating you, making you think that it was something when it wasn't. And... Now she just got you all messed up in the head because you remember she found out that he was smoking smoking that shit 
or whatever, right? And so that's why they out there arguing because she like, look here, you lied about it. Who better to understand you and help you through this than a former addict? But you don't say nothing to me about it. And like she said, if I'm over there, the laws come through here, you in the back getting the crack and who you think they finna take to jail? They finna take me to jail. You ain't did shit. They finna take me to jail. Y'all, so he asked her like, who you been with, this, that, and the other. Girl, she tries to get in the car finally because he had the door blocked. Then he was like, oh, well, maybe this will make you talk to me. He pulls out a knot. I mean, a, a wad of cash. Throws it down on the ground and walks away. Now, this bitch is stupid because I ain't going to lie. Had that been me, I'd have picked that shit up. That's just me. I'm just keeping it real in 100. That's just me. Ain't nobody got to judge me. That's just me, though. So, she drives off. Afterwards, this so crazy ass Scott takes a bat to his own shit starts beating the hell out of his own car who does that what is wrong with you not saying you need to go break somebody else shit but yo car I'm I'm, th I'm guessing that's maybe a car he ain't give a damn about because if that was a, a running car that like you got to be at work in the morning but you gonna beat it with a bat like what the hell is wrong with you just crazy so afterwards, Lizzie goes to her mom's house because it's Jasmine's graduation. She graduated from high school or whatever, right? And so let me just say off top, y'all, Lizzie looked beautiful. Sober Lizzie is beautiful. She had her makeup was gorgeous. Her hair was gorgeous. She had clothes covering her up. Now, don't get me wrong. She still has some love spilling over the top of them jeans or whatever but she looked good in the words of kendall kendall she looked blessed okay of course she had to tell jasmine about her going to california jasmine instantly gets pissed and jasmine is like well, you know we talked about this why would you even go back there lizzie claims she had to see if she was really over scott or if she was still in love with scott now one thing about jasmine i don't like i understand that your mama ain't been in your life for 10 years but that little half is disrespectful she's rude as hell the way she talks to her mama and lizzie allows that and i feel like lizzie maybe allows that because she feels like oh i haven't been there so you know i can't tell her to talk to me with some respect or whatever bullshit I, I don't care I don't care that girl is rude as hell to her mama that's just my opinion don't nobody come for me in my comment section because I ain't sent for you that's just my opinion I feel like she rude as hell to her mama but they're gonna work on the relationship hopefully you know Lizzie stays right on track I don't know if y'all follow Lizzie on social media or not if you don't just go look at her pictures y'all she done shaved the whole both sides big old mohawk you know, hey, to each his own. Moving right along from there. <laughs> Clinton Tracy, y'all. Clinton and Goddess. So they down there in Vegas. They going to the chapel. They going to get married or whatever, right? So they go there to they renew their vows. Afterwards, they go walking down the Vegas Strip or whatever, right? She still got on her wedding dress. She still got on his little tuxedo or whatever. And baby, people is complimenting them left and right. Shouting out all kinds of shit. Somebody out there talking about, don't leave him, girl. That would have been me. Lord, somebody else is like, Scott and Lizzie. And they just have to laugh that shit off. Wrong crackhead couple. Wrong crackheads. But um, I thought it was cute or whatever. You know, crackheads in love. And so they go there and they renew their wedding vows, whatever. It was really cute. Um, I don't know if y'all follow Lizzie. In, I mean, not Lizzie. Um, what's that happen name? Goddess Tracy. I don't know if y'all follow her on social media or not. But y'all, she done got locked up again. And if, if you have not seen the mugshot, bitch is something to see. She look crazy as hell, y'all. She done shaved off this one side. Just this part. Just this part now. Done shaved this off. She looked disheveled as shit in her damn mugshot picture. And y'all, um, can't nobody tell me Clinton ain't on that shit. Because this episode, just watching it, it solidified, for me at least, Clint on that shit. He looked, y'all, his shirt was all to the side like this, and he was just... He looked crazy. He looked like he'd been running from somebody. Just the way his clothes look. I got to fix my shit. Trying to imitate him. He looked crazy as hell. Can't nobody tell me Clint ain't on that shit. Because yes, he is. And and fight me. Yes, he is on that shit, y'all. So, um, that's the one question I got right there with them. Um, what the hell is going to happen? Are they going to be on the next season? Or like, 
What's going on with Clint? I know Clint done lost his damn mind now because he was he's without his God. It's like what is what is we gonna do? What is Clint gonna on what is we gonna do, y'all? But y'all, hopefully we get some kind of insight on the next season as to what the hell is going on with Clint and Goddess, but Y'all, we going to pray on it. We going to pray on it. Move right along. <laughs> Y'all, Andrea Lamar. This whole scene with them, I was fucking rolling. It was so damn funny. So she's still on some old crazy misery shit. Got his ID, his debit card, and his travel passes so he can't leave or whatever, right? She's, the way she's talking is really, it's like a calm crazy. Like, I need you to understand, Lamar. We're gonna stay in Utah. You're gonna love it here. I need you to understand that. Lamar said, I need you to understand you're gonna be by your goddamn self if you don't give me my goddamn ID and my cards and all that. He's telling her, this is some strange behavior. <laughs> when he told her, bitch, this is some strange behavior. And then he called her crazy girl. She was like, I'm not crazy. He's like, yeah, crazy people don't think they crazy. Wait, hold on, don't, 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 because I'm going to start laughing real, real hard. I'm trying to hold it in, y'all. That shit. <laughs> that shit was funny, right? Okay, so he <laughs> he gets pissed at her. He takes her phone, and he ends up leaving, because he like, bitch, you on some crazy, stupid shit. We can be stupid together. So he takes her phone. She starts chasing him at the house, talking about, wait, Lamar, the kids are on the way. I need my phone, Lamar. <laughs> so he leaves with her phone, right? Then he comes back, because I guess it clicked in his head, like, oh, shit. I'm a nigga in a town full of white folks. Let me tear my ass on back to this old crazy bitch. So he goes back over there, right? When he gets there, girl, she laying in the bed crying. <laughs> Oh, y'all. I done already seen this show like twice. I should not be laughing that hard at this. So she comes. <laughs> Lamar come back in the house. She in the bed crying on some old crazy shit. So finally, she gives him his ID cards and his travel passes or whatever. Girl, he pack up his shit. He like, I'm leaving. I'm out of this bitch. Bitch, you bet shit crazy. So she calmly is telling him, okay, Lamar, I'll see you in a few weeks. I'll see you when you get back, Lamar. How about you just stay for six months? And if you don't like it, you can go back. I need you to know me and the kids will be here for you. <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. Lamar left. Lamar deuced the hell out. He was like, bitch, I don't know what you own, but I don't want no parts of this shit. So he ends up leaving. And y'all, that's my third question. What the hell going on with them? Are they still together? Hopefully we get some kind of insight on where their relationship is on the next season. Because I got, bitch, I got to know. Because the way Lamar, but Lamar let her ass have it, it was funny as hell. And it should not have been as funny as it was. But y'all, I was fucking rolling. I had to pause it and watch that shit again because it was so goddamn funny to me. When he told that bitch, crazy people don't think they crazy. Tell you some crazy shit. <laughs> Y'all, but that's them moving right along from them. Y'all, so our favorite throuple, Megan, Michael, and Sarah. So it picks up where it left off, where Megan, um, sorry, not Megan, Mike tells Sarah we need to get a divorce. And she's sitting there looking like, her and this damn black voice, this clap on, clap off, sister soldier voice that she got, it gets on my damn nerves. I can't stand it. It's fake and it's phony and it's like nails on a goddamn chalkboard to me. I can't stand that. I can't stand that. So she, Sarah and her black voice are telling Michael, you should have told me how dare you get me pregnant and leave me. How dare you do this? I said we could, we should have talked. We should have got counseling. Bitch, stop it. Stop it. It was getting on my damn nerves. And then on top of that, for you to say, how could you get me pregnant? Bitch, it take two of y'all to get pregnant. I know my husband had a lot to do with my son being here. Just saying, though. So he tells her, y'all. Now, I don't like Sarah worth a damn. But when he told her this, I had a little bit of sympathy 
He told her that the only reason why he proposed to her and the only reason why he married her is so that he could see his kids because she likes to use the kids as a pawn. Now, time out. I might piss some people off when I say this, but I'm going to say it. Any female that feels like she has to use their child as a pawn to get what she wants out of their father, you ain't shit. I said it, let's talk about it. You ain't shit. And before anybody jumps down in my comments saying, you not in her shoes, you're married, it's different, yada, yada, yada. You right, I ain't in her shoes, but guess what? I was her daughter at a point in time. My biological father, I, he wasn't around for in the beginning. I mean, don't get me wrong, he got, he got his shit together, but he wasn't there in the beginning. And my mother never used me as a pawn against him. I'm speaking from the child's point of view. You ain't shit if you do that. You ain't any female that feels like it's okay to dangle their child like a piece of meat or something in front of the father just so you can get what you want out of him. You ain't shit. And when you do that, you have situations like this that happen where the nigga only stayed with you just so he can be there for his babies. Period. Now, she was bad about it, all hyped up and shit about this divorce. But once he pulled a hurt on her and told her ass that he wanted a divorce, then she wanted to resort back to being a coward and crying and trying to talk it out and figure some shit out. No, you was you was ready to, to knuckle up throw them things a few minutes ago. So you need to keep that same energy and go ahead and get that man that divorce. Don't try to back out of it now. And then she wants to ask about Megan. Did, did she love her? Do you still love her? Look here, homegirl, it don't matter. It don't matter. What matters is that you and him are in y'all shit right now. And that's what he's talking about right now. Now, I'm not defending Michael in no way, shape, form, or matter, because don't get it twisted. Michael ain't shit. I'm sorry. Michael ain't shit. Any nigga that's going to create some babies and not be there for the babies, you ain't shit. I mean, I get it. She's trying to use your babies as pawns, but then again, at the same time, nigga, you got to hold in, hold up your end of the bargain as well. She should not hold your kids away from you, but at the same time, you need to step up to the plate and you need to show her that you want to be there for them kids, and that's just the way it is or whatever, right? So she doesn't end up serving him with the divorce papers. Later on, he goes to his mama's house. Mm -hmm. I ain't finna get on his mama and that goddamn baby fat jack she had on for the 99 to the 2000 but he was going over there showed him his paperwork he's off of parole he's nigga been on parole for seven years seven years and nigga you only 27 so the moment you hit 20 you've been on goddamn parole. really damn anyways so he says he wants to go down to fort worth funky town for those who ain't from texas and don't know he wants to go to fort worth because he has a secret that he needs to tell megan and he wants to be able to i guess smooth things out with him and megan now his mom and them think it's a bad idea because they as well feel like megan is the reason that him and sarah's relationship went to shit now mama you, you, you the oldest one out of everybody here. How dare you blame the side chick that didn't know nothing about his whole marriage. Blame her for your son not being a man and not trying to keep his family together right the way he should be. That ain't, that ain't on her. Bitch, what? But you, you ignorant mama for even think some shit like that. Now, mama don't want him to go to Fort Worth because they don't like Megan whatever. I don't think that y'all need to be having y'all little animosity or whatever towards Megan. Megan ain't the one that lied about being married. Megan ain't the one that lied about not even being with his goddamn uh, baby mama. She was just there because she was listening to the jail talk that nigga was telling her. Don't be coming at Megan. Now, I ain't defending Megan ass neither because even after you knew he was married, you still wanted to carry that on. But we're going to leave that alone. You know what I'm saying? Move right along from that. So later, y'all, he ends up flying to Funky Town to go and surprise Megan. Now, y'all, I was hoping and praying Daddy would open up that door and just a boop, 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 just two pieces and a biscuit on his ass. But Megan opens the door. She's all surprised and shit. But pause. Before he gets there, he's driving in the car on the way to see Megan. He gets a phone call from a totally different chick. This half a saying, I just got off of work at five and I went and did this with the kids and yada, yada, yada. Who is she? Who is she? And he gets over there to Megan's house 
He pops up at the door, surprises her. She's all happy to see him. He says that he didn't like the way that their relationship or the, the last conversation that they had, he didn't like the way that they ended. So he wants him to get back to the place that they were. I don't know if that means he wants to work it out with Megan. Mind you, you still married, nigga. You still need to go through with your whole divorce and all of that. But you still got a whole nother chick. And he still didn't say what the hell the secret was. We TV. That's my third and fourth question. What the hell was the secret? I know that wasn't a secret. Like, what what, what, what was the secret? Is the secret that you got another chick? Or you trying to marry the bitch? Or what's the secret? I don't know. We TV, I got, I got questions. I need answers. And y'all, that was the end of the episode. It literally ended just like that. Okay, it ended just like that. The new season of Love After Lockup starts next Friday. I will be here giving you the review for it. Hopefully, we find out some kind of insight as to the whole, what the hell is going on with Meghan Michael and Sarah and Andrea Lamar and Clinton Goddess? Because I got questions. I need to know. Nigga, I got to know. Okay? But y'all, that was the episode review. Please let me know what y'all think about it. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. I hope y'all enjoyed the review for the season overall. Let me know what y'all think about it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out what's up y'all do me a favor and share the video please make sure to subscribe to my channel let me know what you think and um hit that notification button so you will be up to date when i upload my latest videos i have